10 years ago, I started my pre-med journey as a freshman at UCLA. Today, I'm a doctor. I'm an anesthesiology resident in New York City who also helps thousands of pre-meds get into their dream med schools. And this last year, I worked closely with 16 fantastic pre-meds. Together, we earned 87 interviews and 23 acceptances. And today, I'm going to share the five takeaways that I learned from this cycle that I wish I knew when I was a pre-med. Takeaway number one, be unique. There's a right and a wrong way. I met a student who shared her love for charcuterie. In fact, she had started a charcuterie board business. I was so interested. In fact, I thought it was a good idea for me to buy a board to celebrate my partner and I's four year anniversary. It would support her business and it'd be a cool little treat for us. Well, then the pre-med shared, well, the business isn't really open and all she's done is started the Instagram account. This is an example of being unique the wrong way. Being unique just to say you're unique. On the other hand, our student Andy, who applied this cycle, has many interests outside of medicine. He founded an international nonprofit to support 15 small businesses from travel companies to bookshops. He's also a proper magician and founded the Magician Volunteer Program at the local hospital. Hospital. To date, his team has performed to over 200 individual children. He interviewed at Harvard, Cornell, and got accepted into UCLA and Vanderbilt. Uniqueness without excellence feels tacky, like you're doing it for medical school. Uniqueness with excellence shows me what you're passionate about outside of medicine and how you uniquely can bring those passions to the field. And the more applications you read, the more you understand that it's impossible to replicate another student's unique narrative. We have eight full AMCAS applications that earned acceptances to the best medical schools in the country. Over 13,500 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the application database link in our description box below now. Takeaway number two, walk and then run. I reviewed a pre-med who had a 3.85 GPA and a 515 MCAT who didn't get in anywhere. His first most meaningful experience was honestly unreal. He served as a clinical research supervisor for two years, managing an entire team in the Pacific Northwest studying drug addiction. But that was it. Great stats, a single great extracurricular, and after that, just a ton of holes and red flags. Little clinical experience, no other volunteering and a hodgepodge of shallow extracurriculars like a volunteer director or coordinator for a random club. Our student George had a research extracurricular that I'd argue is equally world-class. He studied pediatric genetic aneurysms, and as an undergrad, he performed research at the level of a well-seasoned graduate student. He may very well have been one of the strongest researchers I've ever seen as a pre-med. But the difference was that surrounding that extracurricular, he had a foundational application. Everything else was solid, no other red flags. And that foundational application got his foot in the door. Now his unbelievable research, that earned him a seat at the table. Now he's accepted with a full ride scholarship to the competitive Cleveland Clinic five-year learner program. I learned that successful pre-meds follow two phases in their pre-med journey. Phase one is build the foundation. Cover up all the weaknesses and the red flags. Then phase two is to excel and be world-class at something. Double down on your strengths and find the thing that will earn your seat at the table. Next, we're going to talk about the most common misconception that I see in pre-meds. Assuming that adcoms want pre-med students who know medicine. But before that, if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you want to make sure you're avoiding the mistakes that caused tens of thousands of pre-meds to get rejected this last cycle. Our pre-med catalyst students that submit their applications on time have an 8% rejection rate. The national average is five times higher than that at 41%. Our results are because we work so closely with students. In fact, we can only take on four students per month before we're full. If you'd be interested in getting into some of the strongest programs in the country, click the application cycle advising link to book a free strategy call before we're full for the cycle. Takeaway number three, do your job. Medical schools will do theirs. The most common mistake I've seen on the medical school application is flaunting all the knowledge you've learned from being an EMT or a scribe. 
No one expects you to know what a pneumothorax is or the mechanism of action for epinephrine. Med schools know they can teach you medicine. That is their job that they've been doing for hundreds of years. What medical schools can't teach you are the character traits, like the persistence, the passion for your community, the confidence and the creativity. And so that's what they look for. The best people with the highest potential of becoming the best doctors. They know when they find those pre-meds and surround them with the medical knowledge they know they can teach, you get one hell of a doctor. Takeaway number four, ankle weights. 3.96512 MCAT, 3.82516 MCAT, both with extremely strong applications that match students that have gotten into schools like UCLA, Georgetown, and Boston University. Unfortunately, those students got in nowhere, and the only difference was that they submitted their application late. Their secondaries weren't turned around for months because of a full-time job or retaking the MCAT or personal issues or psychological burnout. All of these are valid reasons for taking time off. But after seeing this result cycle after cycle, I have to tell you, if you submit your application late, you will significantly lower your chances. So much so that a pre-med who should be celebrating an acceptance to UCLA will be at home, miserable because they got in nowhere. And this is preventable. Even with the family vacations, the burnout, and all the personal issues, you can submit both quality writing and have it be on time. We recommend to start writing in October, the previous year before you're applying. We push all of our pre-med catalyst students to do that just because we know how painful it is to not get accepted because of a late submission. Takeaway number five, the adcom ick. Over the last seven years, I've read thousands of personal statements, and I'm not lying when I say that I haven't read a single strong personal statement that started with a medical emergency and ended with a physician saving the day. Medicine is an unbelievably awesome profession. I love being a doctor, but when pre-meds open with medical dramatizations and paint the physician as this superhero that saved the day, it reads as quite idealistic and often immature. The assumption here is that your entire life, you weren't really thinking about being a doctor. Then like a light switch, after seeing this life-saving situation, boom, everything changed. And while that may be true, the fear that adcoms have is that when you finally learn how drab or downright ugly medicine can be, then the light switches again, boom. You're no longer interested and you quit in the middle of medical school. Your pre-med journey should be gradual grown and nurtured over time. That's the most compelling, believable narrative. These takeaways helped our students earn 23 acceptances to schools like UCLA, Cornell, Vanderbilt, and the Cleveland Clinic. Now that you know these, you'll want to know the 10 hard truths that I wish I knew when I started my pre-med journey 10 years ago. That video is here, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.